Good morning. Happy Saturday. Welcome to your early morning intuitive guidance. I'm Dr. Bonnie Nassbaum here with some words of wisdom to get your day off to a good start. It's still pitch black here, but I think it's going to be a beautiful day. We've got actually a week of warmer weather coming, so that will be wonderful. Hope you're off to a good start on this fine Saturday. So we have a little bit. Good morning, Abigail. Glad you're here. Welcome. You're the first one popping on. We have a little bit of wisdom coming from Tosha Silver today. So that is where we're going to be headed. But let's start with some nice deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Good morning, Peggy. Welcome. Glad you found me. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. Looks like someone else has popped on. Welcome. Glad you're here. Up, Cindy. Good morning. Good morning. In through the nose. Deeper this time. And out through the mouth. Letting it all go. Shaking your shoulders. Listening to the crackles in your neck. Good morning. Good morning. Glad you're all here. So... Interesting how things come together. So today my Deepak meditation was how to make your environment creative. And it said, um, the centering thought was I create a space around me that is open and appreciative. So just take a couple of breaths on that idea. <sighs> Creating a space around you that's open and appreciative open and appreciative. When you hear those words, what do you think that's going to allow? What do you think that's going to open up? If you are open and appreciative, if that's the energy you're sending off, what's that going to create? I think it's going to create creativity. It's going to create opportunity. It's going to create flow. All of the things that we look forward to, right? So the particular chapter that we're going to be reading out of Tosha Silver, Outrageous Openness, Letting the Divine Take the Lead, um, kind of dovetail, dovetails with that. So as we're breathing, as we're creating that space that's open and appreciative, I'm going to use a word that Tony Robbins used yesterday, good morning, good morning, which was um, consciously, consciously creating what it is that you want. Not living by default, but living through conscious choice and I'm drag out my little card here expansive consciousness dissolves obstacles so that was what I put on my board the first day when we broke was I can't I want to break through that good morning Debbie glad you are here welcome welcome break through I can't into how can I how can I? And even just posting the question, because you all know that my favorite thing is why? How is not our issue? How gets taken care of by the universe? Why is what we need to focus on? And I've said a bazillion times, and you could probably repeat with me all together now, when your why is big enough, how takes care of itself. When your why is big enough, how takes care of itself a tattoo of that on the inside of our eyelids, we'd be in great shape. Good morning, Gwen. Glad you are here. Awesome, awesome. So, anyway, anywho, on we go. Our chapter in Outrageous Openness, Letting the Divine Take the Lead, is Contestants Must Be Present to Win. Contestants Must Be Present to Win. Good morning, Mel. Glad you're here. Welcome, welcome. It's page 167 for those of you who have the book. Open your hymnals, 167. We're going to read along here. The key word in this heading, contestants must be present to win, is present. Thank you, Cindy, for posting that. Present. Again, if we're not in, in here, things don't happen. Somebody knocks on our door and no one's home. No one's home to answer. So this little chapter, and again, she's cheeky. She's really cheeky. But the um, 
things in this chapter will help you understand what happens when you're not fully in your body, when you're not inhabiting home. It's 157 in your book. Okay, so for those of you who have the book, it might either be 167 or 157, depending. That's interesting. I wonder what, we'll have to figure that out. Anywho, starts out with a bumper sticker. Where else can you get beautiful knowledge but a bumper sticker, right? And happy 1111. This is a very auspicious day, and I'm so excited to, I know I'm going all over. Follow along, ladies. <laughs> Tony Robbins, UPW, Unleashed the Power Within. Today, our focus is transformation, eliminating internal conflicts. Good morning, Cheryl. Welcome, welcome. So I love this day. This is my favorite day of the whole four-day event. And um, yesterday, we got done early. We started at nine o'clock in the morning and we finished up at 8 30 at night that's early for him that's way early for him and we even got a break one break I take my breaks like I said I take my breaks so here's the bumper sticker a Berkeley bumper sticker if you were in your body you'd be home now <laughs> so for those who get pissed off when they're caught in traffic if I were in my body I'd be at home now <laughs> so here we go one day, I became seriously motivated to become more present. I was driving onto the Bay Bridge one afternoon, lost in thought. The next thing I knew, the toll taker was yanking me out of my reverie, saying sharply, Honey, what in Lord's name do you want me to do with this sorry thing? It sure ain't going to get you across no damn bridge. I realized I had handed her my garage door opener. While I chuckled about it for an hour, I knew I had a problem. So now I stop often during the day to ask, where am I? What am I doing right in this minute? Where has my mind taken me? And most of all, am I breathing? So right now, let's take a breath in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And I want to point out to you, since we practice this every single day when you're on here with me, the payoffs are tremendous. So, for instance, one of our Practical Rebel Tribe had a medical procedure recently, and when they checked her breathing, they were quite impressed with how well she was breathing. It's the practice. It's the practice. So, periodically during your day, nice deep breath in and out. Actually, I was very impressed that we were guided yesterday early on in the process because these are long days on Zoom. Let's see. There we go. I'm back. So that's weird. I haven't had a wireless issue in quite a while. Anywho, um, we were guided to every 20 minutes or so look away from our computer, look at a distance to rest our eyes, take some nice deep breaths, be present, be present, be present, right? So let's keep going here. I want to reread that part about the question she's asking yourself. And I want you to ask yourself right now. There's 10 of you on here with me. Yay. Awesome. Welcome to those I didn't greet personally. Glad you're here. So now I stop often during the day to ask, where am I? What am I doing right in this minute? Where has my mind taken me? And most of all, am I breathing? Am I breathing? We get so caught up being the automatons going through our day. Like when I was working heavily way back when my kids were little, I'd drive home, run the garage door up, drive in and go, how the hell did I get home? Didn't remember the trip at all because my mind was so consumed with what happened during the day and how, was someone going to be okay and had I done a good enough job with them and blah, blah, blah. So be present, be here now ground yourself. We did an exercise yesterday that was amazing and it was merely a mirroring exercise. Good morning, Diane. Welcome. Happy, happy Saturday. There were three of us in a group and my group only ended up being two because we were online, but there, there are 11,000 people attending this thing live. Thank you for posting the four questions, Cindy. And there are 3,000 of us online. So sometimes you get put in a breakout group and there's nobody else in there. This time there were two of us in there. So we did, the, did it without having the observer. But the gist of it was we thought of something 
an event in our life and we played it out physically. We acted the way we acted. Good morning, Bobby. Welcome. We acted the way we acted during that event. The other person mirrored us, mirrored our breathing, mirrored our movements, mirrored our eyes, mirrored our whatever we did. Then they had to try to guess what we were experiencing. So for me, I picked um, becoming a Mary Kay director, greeting people, saying hello, celebrating, etc. And she got pretty darn close in terms of guessing it. She did um, playing with her dog, and I guessed it. And when we all came back into the group, again, bringing us all back together, 14,000 people, the energy shift in that room was palpable. We went from being, yeah, crazy, wild, uh, sometimes some not very in our bodies, not very present, to very grounded, very solid, very solemn in a way because we had just entered someone else's energy field and felt them and they did with us and then we all came back together and we're all still kind of in that space imagine a workspace like that imagine a workspace where people are truly present truly in their bodies truly connected with everybody else holy crap right so our four questions where am i what am i doing right in this minute where has my mind taken me and am I breathing? It also has helped to simply plug into the earth each morning like a healthy, strong tree. We've done this before, so let's go. I imagine having a long taproot that goes all the way into the earth's center, unshakable despite outer turbulence. Talk about grounding, right? When I'm about to drive, I even root through the floor of the car to keep me attentive. Nonetheless, being more grounded is real work in progress. Certainly some of us, especially many creative sorts, can get lost, easily lost in alternate realities. I t you, you forget to breathe. Yes, so remembering to breathe, that's a grounding thing also, right? And I do. I spin out into the cosmos and then bring myself back. And then I spin out into the cosmos and bring myself back. I often create scenarios in my mind. A word, a thought, a song will trip off a scenario, and I'm playing out these scenarios in my head, not living real life, living all these fantasy lives. So bring myself back, bring myself back, bring myself back. Spiritual communities, even yoga classes, can sometimes be filled with folks longing to avoid the grit of the present for the buzzing high of bliss. <laughs> and so Bobby Silverstone, who's on our, our call today, when she does her yoga classes, she grounds us. She grounds us to make sure we're not all sailing off into the, the cosmos. Think of the tree. Ah, yes, absolutely. So yoga, fitness studios, all that stuff will work. Good therapist will work with you on your breathing, getting you breathing deeply, getting you grounded. Are you present? So again, right here, right now, another nice deep breath. And let it go. And one more just for good measure. Doesn't that feel better? Just check in with yourself. Couple of breaths. Huge difference. Okay. So she says, I'm going to read that last sentence. Spiritual communities, even yoga classes, can sometimes be filled with folks longing to avoid the grit of the present for the buzzing high of bliss. But what if it's all the same? A false dichotomy. God really is in the details, all the messy earthly details. So now she's talking about a little little story of that. I once lived in an apartment building where one of my neighbors was an otherworldly, charismatic woman from a local temple. She had a wonderful singing voice and often invited everyone over to chant or meditate. She'd had many spiritual teachers around the world and flamboyant inner visions that she loved to share. Good morning, Carolyn. Welcome. Most people in the building found her utterly endearing and completely maddening. You see, she seemed to treat reality as a pesky distraction from her spiritual seeking. What good were all those celestial visions if she moved everybody's still wet clothes when she needed the dryer? 
How did chanting help if she left her trash everywhere like so, for waiting for some kind of cosmic pickup? Often she would wander away as someone spoke. My sister does that. Very distractible. And I'll be saying something and she's gone. She walks off. Very frustrating. On the night she moved out, she somehow entangled her U-Haul in the row of bulbs that lit our garage. As she hightailed from the building for the final time, she pulled the whole electrical strip off the wall and then dragged it behind her down the road, loudly clattering all the way. My neighbors and I watched in bemused wonder as our cars were plunged into darkness. The damage took weeks to be repaired. A couple of us later remembered that her adopted name in Sanskrit meant bearer of divine light. <laughs> so how present are you? I love that. I asked the question, how present are you? And my internet goes, <laughs> good morning, Sue. Glad you're here. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? So how present are you? Are you grounded? Do you feel any buzzing in your body? Can you feel that sense of treeness? I like using that analogy. So put your feet on the ground. Take a nice deep breath in. As you exhale, groan through your feet. <sighs> Sending down that deep tap root into Mother Earth. Grounding you strongly. So even if there's a high wind, you are anchored. You're grounded. And then sending out all those little feeder roots out to the side. Those are the ones that nourish you. So that deep tap root is for grounding. Those little feeder roots are for just that, feeding you, nourishing you. And then your branches, reaching up into the divine, connecting you to all that is. You are at one with everything. So you can be that floaty divine being but you're also firmly grounded firmly rooted in mother earth and when we are firmly rooted in mother earth we take much better care of our mother earth so how well do you care for the water how well do you care for the land do you know that it takes 500 years to create an inch of soil naturally we can speed our process up but 500 years. Can you appreciate that process? How awesome is that? So today is a day of transformation. 11-11. Interesting. I can't imagine that Tony Robbins and his organization paid attention to the um, logistics of astrology with regard to setting up this event, but there are no accidents. The fact that today is transformation, eliminate inner conflicts on 11-11, there are no accidents. So expect big things today. Expect big things. They may seem small on the earth plane, but know that they are literally moving heaven and earth. Expect big things. So how will you avail yourself of this energy? Being present, being connected, doing your earth walk living this lifetime. This is the one you're in right now. How will you do that? Better question, why will you do that? Why would you want to do that? Because as you answer why, the house will take care of themselves. Opportunities will present themselves. The universe will say, yep, this one's ready, so let's present her with whatever it is that you need to move forward in your life. And again, I'm going to show you it again. Expansive consciousness dissolves obstacles. If there is a perceived obstacle, and I'm going to say perceived because those obstacles are opportunities. Obstacles always present opportunities. And when we're tired and when we're burdened and when we're looking at the obstacle, we're like, hell yeah, whatever, opportunity. But Ventilate it with the breath. Get some air in there. <sighs> oh, awesome. Awesome. Fabulous. So the cancer has served as a portal to being more present. It is, it is a gift. It is a gift. How awesome. More clarity, 
more presence. Beautiful, beautiful. And now you have the message so you can release the messenger. You have that message. I choose to be present. I choose to have clarity. And the messenger can be released. How cool is that? Fabulous. All right. So it, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to practice presence today. Practice presence through the breath. Practice presence through asking yourself those questions. Where am I right now? What am I doing? Am I fully present in this moment as I'm doing it? Or am I distracting myself with my phone? Am I, I can't tell you the number of times that the presenters at the first two days of this, this UPW have busted people for being on their phones, for sitting down when everybody else is standing, for really not being present. You're paying 6000 bucks to be there, plus all the extras of travel, hotel, food, etc., and you're on your phone? Really? <laughs> so I just think, and they're, they're using humor as they bust people. Turn around and take her phone away. You know, <laughs> they're using humor with it. But there's the point. There's the point. Do you ever find yourself in the middle of something on your phone, something stupid like a game, and someone comes up to have a conversation, and you kind of send them the message with your body. I'm in the middle of something. A phone game. Really? What's important? What's most important? So, enjoy your day. Enjoy your presence here on your earth walk this day, 11-11. It's the only 11-11-2023 there is ever going to be. Avail yourself of it. Be fully in it. Be present. Have some day. I just think that's hilarious. That's the third failure. That's, well, failure. Whatever. Divinely, divinely uh, added interventions. Let's put that. Have an awesome day. Remember, you're capable of far more than you think you are. Bye-bye. Hilarious.